It is September 24th. It is Monday. It's a brand new week in VR gaming, and September has been an incredible, wonderful month. I mean, what a beautiful month we've had this month of September. Really, really good. A lot of VR games have been added to the docket. I really feel like there's a lot of September games that are going to end up ranked in the top 100. Maybe top 100 Vive, top 100 Oculus Rift, top 100 PlayStation VR. A lot of games are going to make their presence known this month. Pretty cool. And then tomorrow... Tomorrow, we have the release of Creed, Rise to Glory. I continue to play Creed, played it a little bit last night, and today I'm planning to try to play as much Creed as I possibly can so that tomorrow I can give nuanced thoughts on my feelings on Creed and how Creed fits in. Is it another game that you got to grab right away? Is it something to maybe hold off on? I mean, there's lots of thoughts that we can... We can go down that road and we will take a look at that tomorrow. Okay, so this is Hotel Transylvania. This is a rhythm action game, kind of going in the same line as Beat Saber, Box VR, some of these kinds of games. You can see it's really physically active. You have kind of this um, Darth Maul style lightsaber with colors on each end and obviously you're trying to collect the balls of the correct color you're trying to avoid these purple things or just smash them it is being developed by specular theory and it's sony virtual reality hasn't had a very good track record you know in terms of producing this stuff they've brought out the various ghostbuster games somehow it is tangentially related to Hotel Transylvania. I'm not sure exactly how this is related to Hotel Transylvania in some sort of way. Probably just like little background characters and stuff that you see occasionally. Um, I don't know, is this gonna make much of a dent? Uh, it, you know, we did, we're not completely overflowing with rhythm games, so the people that are really huge fans of rhythm games might give this a look next week, but it is certainly treading in some deep waters with everything else we got going on looks kind of cool hopefully the price will be relatively uh attractive um but yeah that is hotel transylvania pop stick hotel transylvania pop stick so i guess you, you got this pop stick thing that you're using so that's what it's all about okay so now we're talking about creed a little bit kev gret says so excited for Creed. Blink once if it's good. And IPCSK says, so are you under an embargo for Creed, Anthony? Can't say anything. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's a review embargo. But a lot of times I give my first impressions on stuff or I'll just kind of talk about how I'm feeling about something. But I figure with Creed, it, I'm just going to wait for Tuesday. I, I'm just, I'm not going to talk about this game. I'll talk about it on Tuesday and we'll go ahead and get into it tomorrow. But yeah, I, I mean, I have to play more of it too. Um, so after this show, I'm definitely going to try to throw a lot of time at it uh, prior to tomorrow, get a better feel for it. A very detailed Pimax 8K versus 5K plus through the lens comparison from Viver using the brand new PI tool. And so he's comparing all these different things. Let's go ahead and full screen this for a second and listen into to Sweet Viver for a minute and check it out. It was the Skyrim VR logo. Have a look at the small text on top, which says The Elder Scrolls V. Even if the 8K is using way more pixels and sub-pixels to render the text, and despite the text having a better definition on the 8K, it's still very obvious that the text on the 5K Plus is easier to read and the letters are easier to distinguish from each other. Also, the 8K pixel pattern creates a lot of color fringing or a high amount of small sub-pixels with different colors to make the text white. And unfortunately, this is quite visible with our eyes even in VR. This makes the text a little bit more shimmery and more colored than white. 
and even if the 5k plus subpixels also are being used using the three colors to render white well of course it's needed because that's how white color is created in an LCD RGB panel still the subpixel colors are much less apparent on the 5k plus the horizontal and vertical pixel pattern has a huge advantage here, I think, and that's going to be even more obvious in our next example. <clears throat> now let's have a look at black text. So yeah, so here he is, he's giving you a lot of different examples where he is really zooming in on the picture. And the thing is, you kind of have to watch this video. If you just watch these examples, you're going to walk away and you're going to say, obviously, I want the Pimax 5K+. Plus." I mean, it's pretty obvious in the majority of these examples that despite some, some certain negatives, the Pimax 5K+, Plus comes away with a better image. It's pretty obvious in all of these examples. But I caution you, you might want to watch this full entire video because Swee Viver talks about how he captured the images and then he took the images later and did some Photoshop stuff with it as well in his effort to enhance the difference or to try to make it more even or something like that. But you have to take all of that with a grain of salt. So you might want to check out the full video when you get a chance where he breaks down exactly how he captured this footage. But still, it's kind of one of these situations you can say what you want about whether or not the Pimax 8K has like more pixels and all this stuff, but it's coming across better on the 5K plus in real life circumstances. So it's pretty obvious. Everybody basically wants to get their hands on the Pimax 5K plus. So that's kind of what we're getting from these videos. I'll see what people are talking about over here in chat. Prince Alexander says horizontal, horizontal vertical arrangement is so much better for text. And uh, main fan talks about the 8K chromatic aberration. And IPCSK is saying, ah, oh, man, now I want to upgrade from my CV1. Yeah, well, we got to wait. We've got to wait, guys. I mean, look at these. These shots are really interesting. The 5K Plus does look really good. I mean, it looks really good in a lot of these shots. And it does make you want to go in that direction. But remember, we got two days, guys. The Oculus Connect 5 is in two days. We might find out some information about more headsets. So probably want to cool our heels just a little bit and then take it all into consideration. One of our topics yesterday was, does all this Pimax stuff, does this put legit pressure on Oculus and HTC? Does this, like, is this making them nervous? Are they going to have to do something here? Are they going to have to respond to this in a greater way than just half dome and 140 degrees? And we're going to find out a little bit more information. I don't believe Oculus is going to be the type of company that is going to worry about what other people are doing. I think what Oculus is going to do, they're thinking mass market. See, Oculus has to think about something that they can put out there, something that devs can support, something that is sustainable, so they're in a bit, I mean, look at that. That looks completely better. Now this looks very close, but that other one, oh my God, it was a dramatic difference. Let's, let's listen in to Swee Viver for a sec here. Let's check this out. Text mainly, especially if you look at that number 600. A second example of the same gauge, which focuses on the M-A-T something Russian word, shows us slightly more definition on the 8K side, but the clarity and readability is still better on the 5K+, Plus, despite using much less pixels and subpixels to show the text. Very, very interesting indeed. Now, in this third and last example in the cockpit, I want you to look at the green edge of this gauge. The sharpness of the inner side of this green edge is definitely higher on the 5K Plus than it is on the 8K. I can say both of the headsets gives us slightly jagged edges and the difference between the jaggies is rather small, even if the 8K smoothens the edges. A yeah, that's a pretty big difference right there. I mean, that you can see really, really much sharper lining there on that 5K Plus. So, I mean, all of these images, it just continues to hammer home that basically the Pimax 5K Plus seems to be the HMD to beat for consumer use for the foreseeable future. 
And so Pimax, bro, when are you going to send me one of these babies? I would love to do some comparison shots like this. No, Swee Viver, we got to give this guy credit because he has gone over and above the call of duty trying to break this stuff down in a really, really good way. And very, very impressive to be sure. You know, tested. What about tested, guys? Somebody needs to get tested a 5K plus and the standard 8K and let tested go to town like Swee Viver is going to town. But Swee Viver, man, much love to Swee Viver. So let's give some, some, uh, some credit here. This difference, I'm not seeing a huge difference between these two, but usually the 5K plus, we are getting a better image. And let's see what people are talking about back over on chat. And so Crunchy says, Oculus is going for the technology for the price point. IPCSK says, I think Oculus Facebook will want to focus more on the standalone side of VR to reach more people. Uh, Terry Blanchard says, 8K Plus won't be good until they have separate GPUs controlling each eye, which supposedly we could get some actual legit SLI action out of some of these NVIDIA cards, right? Chris Cox says the Pimax is for people wanting to upgrade. It's not really growing VR as the people who buy it will already be all in on VR anyways. I think Oculus are looking more to grow VR by getting new users. Regardless though, Oculus does not want to be distanced dramatically by another headset's technology that is in a relatively decent price range. These Pimax headsets aren't being sold for two grand. You can get your hands on these things. Now, one of the worries that Steve Bishop of VR Roundtable fame brought up, and Steve, you know, this is a great point. Steve was concerned, what if you have a problem? What if you have a problem with your Pimax? We all know that the support from HTC is absolutely god awful. And, and if you have a problem with your HTC headset or a controller or something, you're honestly probably better off to just immediately sell that thing as is on eBay or Craigslist, get the most you can get for it, and just buy a brand new one. Because trying to go through HTC support is a non-starter. You want to buy your HTC products from like Amazon or or Micro Center or something and try to bypass HTC somehow, some way, because the support is awful. Well, we have no idea really, do we, of what kind of support Pimax has. So you make a, a major investment in one of these 5K plus headsets but but are you going to have the support there? So you might have to consider buying two of these babies and having one sitting in the closet in case there is a problem. So it's another thing to consider with Pimax. But I got to tell you, I'm a little bit jelly over all of this. The clarity is beautiful. Um, it does have this widescreen capabilities. I really do want to see a 5K Plus sooner rather than later. There's a game coming out called Adoption. I don't know anything about this. It is Fair Game Studio, and I like their logo. I like their logo, uh, but I don't know anything about this. It says available 2018, and when when he said abduction spelled with an A, for some reason I was thinking of this game Adoption, and I was like, oh shit, did that game come out? Is it cool? Because it looks kind of cool. I mean, you look at some of these screenshots and stuff, this looks like another creepy game. You know, transference, all these creepy games that we have. Oregon Quarter, you know, interesting, creepy kind of a game. So that's what I was thinking of, folks. That's why I went on that tangent with uh, Phil Yearn there. But he was talking about the classic abduction from uh, Cyan Incorporated. You know what's funny? Okay, so here I am. I'm on Steam. This is upcoming VR games. And one of the interesting things is when you look at this list, all you have to do is um, all you have to do is scroll up and down and look at these logos, and you can tell a lot of times by looking at a logo just how indie a game is. Like for example, this here Wall Walker, that is a pretty indie logo. The Desert's Rose, that looks pretty indie. Um, you know, you look at some of these logos, they look pretty darn indie, like Teleporter, that looks kind of indie. 
Um, but you look at adop adoption, that looks pretty cool. Creed has a pretty cool logo. Vox Machina, eh, okay. A Fisherman's Tail has a pretty cool logo. But yeah, you can look at some of these logos and tell just how indie a game looks. You know, here's my question about, about Dreams. I swore I read somewhere that Dreams is still coming in 2018, yet here we are. It is September 24th, and we don't have a date for Dreams. So it is very, very, very difficult for me to believe that Dreams is actually still going to arrive this year when they don't have a date for it. I believe this is probably a January or a February 2019 game. That's my opinion. But supposedly, like if you do some searches, Media Molecule or somebody said, Sony, maybe one of the publishers said that, no, Dreams is still supposed to arrive sometime this year. I find it hard to believe. But yeah, going back to this bout of blood story, this is easily the most interesting story of the bunch here. In an Ask Me Anything session on our PSVR last week, and once again, this is Upload VR. Make sure you guys bounce over to their site, check them out. Um, but basically, they said that they would probably need to sell 40,000 units to break even, that they need to sell around 28,000 copies at the non-discount price to break even. <clears throat> and that's not counting me living off my bank account and not taking a salary for two years. Wow. A member of the team explained later, adding that future sales would likely bring that up to... 40,000 units. The studio confirmed that it takes 70% of the profits from each sale of Bow to Blood with the other 30% going towards PlayStation, though it also revealed that the game was partially funded by Sony, which likely explains why it's only appearing on PSVR right now. It was a very generous deal, the studio explained. Most of the time, developers get much less, but VR deals are a bit better as the user base is smaller, so it's harder to break even. Wow, this sounds super harsh. Could you imagine if everybody on Steam had to sell 40,000 copies? Could you guys imagine if Jet Island had to sell 40,000 copies? Thank God a lot of the smaller indie developers on Steam don't need to sell 40,000 copies. That is a hell of a lot of copies. They must have really invested a lot of money in About a Blood. Who would possibly imagine that? That is very shocking. But now it is coming one day later on October 5th. So we did know this was an early October 4th, I mean, early October release. And when you watch this trailer, for the majority of the trailer, it's no gameplay at all. Like the first, I don't know how much of this, you don't see any gameplay at all, but it does show a nice story. It shows a lot of good graphical touches and things. And then at the very, very end, you're getting a lot of gameplay clips. And the interesting thing about it is it appears this game has a story. It appears it's an interesting dungeon crawler, but it also has a lot of puzzle elements and stuff as well. So it kind of does look like the total package. I don't know if it's really going to like actually be the total package, but Witching Tower VR, this looks like a pretty big game for early October. And of course, on October 1st, I can tell you, I will try to do the same thing I did on September 1st, which is try to make up a little list of all the biggest games of October. And this is absolutely going to be one of them, you know, and this is one of them in early October. I don't know that we actually have a lot of stuff that is lined up for later in October. Now there you see the puzzle gameplay. You can see this is kind of a dungeon crawler, Vanishing Realms-esque type of game, but it looks like it's also adding kind of a bit of like the gallery episode one and two in terms of like environmental puzzles maybe a little bit, or at least some light puzzles. Graphics look pretty good right there. So that is the Witching Tower VR and that will be on October 5th. So once again, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, all those good things, and I will see everybody tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time. All right, folks, I will see you then. Take it easy. Later.